It's a scene that sends shivers down the spine of every fan. While investigating the perfect murder of Spock's brother, Make me a perfect murder, babe. Columbo takes a few moments to play with some buttons in the TV studio, accompanied by whimsical music. It takes 1 minute 57 seconds exactly, but it has spawned hours of complaints from fans that this is just useless padding to stretch the episode's runtime. But there's more to this scene, as we shall see in our investigation of today's Echoes of Columbo, the riddle of the lieutenant, and the test patterns. File this one under Columbo Basics. There are two episode lengths. The 70 minute shows, typified by Murder by the Book or A Stitch in Crime, and the 90 minute shows, like A Friend Indeed or Troubled Waters. Some people call these two hour shows for the block of television time they would occupy. Here you'll sometimes get scenes that seem to exist just to consume those pesky extra minutes, like our previous video on the time Columbo plays the tuba. This is one of those. And on the surface, yeah, what the heck? Okay, he hits some buttons, and some more buttons, and some more buttons. We're not exactly seeing the best special effects Hollywood has to offer here, but I'll defend this scene with my dying breath for three reasons. One, it's just not that long, not even two minutes, making it four times shorter than my benchmark for Columbo time-wasting, the scene where he waits for the printer in An Exercise in Fatality. Two, believe it or not, this scene does contribute to the plot. The test patterns wink out and there's a dot or flash in the center of the screen. Columbo looks briefly surprised, but then his expression turns thoughtful. Keep in mind, he's just talked to Walter, the projectionist, who's told him about the flashes on the screen that signal a real changeover. It's not unreasonable to suggest that the test pattern flash makes him think of the changeover flash, and that playing with the buttons here leads him to try and make a changeover himself later on. Since I've been hanging around here, I think I've become a button freak. And that, in turn, leads him to the clue that breaks the killer's alibi. There, right there, you see the flash? Is it essential to the mystery? Not really. But there's a lot more going on in Make Me a Perfect Murder. There are layers to the characters and the plot. It's trying to make them more than just props in the back and forth of a standard Columbo episode. And that brings me to my third point. The scene adds to the overall depth and texture of the story. For one thing, Columbo is all alone here. He's not intentionally annoying a suspect or throwing someone off guard. He's genuinely enjoying himself. It looks like fun. He's always enjoyed fooling around with things, like when he puts on Lucerne's hat or plays with a priceless vase. People looking at screens is also a recurring motif in the episode. Watching film, watching TV, watching monitors. It's implied that this is how Kay Freestone sees the world, as something that can be controlled, spliced, and edited. You're a very special man, Lieutenant. You accept things as they are. I try to change them. We certainly know that she can work all the equipment. And Miss Freestone, she understands all about this too. But as the killer's world starts to crumble, we see Columbo invade these screens. And suddenly Kay is stabbing frantically at the controls, unable to turn Columbo off. Until he finally steps out of the screens and right into her trailer to deliver the final blow. In a clever bit of foreshadowing, we see that the spinning test patterns have replicated themselves here as the spinning merry-go-round on Kay's screens. Then the lieutenant himself knows the exact button to push. I think I know the right button. Ending the episode with another on-screen flash. Note that the end credits play over the test pattern waltz by composer Patrick Williams. And there's one of those test patterns again, hidden in one of the bottom screens. Ever since the Columbo file, it was known that certain episodes had to hit 90 minutes and were thusly padded out, some more elegantly or successfully than others. But doesn't that detract from our enjoyment of the show? To see scenes like this as unnecessary filler? Shouldn't we take the show on its own merits, consider it a cohesive whole, rather than a slapped together TV production like the schlock we see in this very episode? Isn't that the attitude towards what we see on TV that the episode tries to address? This show needs a lot of work. The script needs work. So maybe we just need to get over ourselves and enjoy this scene, like Columbo himself seems to be enjoying it, and look at it as a way of gaining further insight into the episode, as Columbo gains further insight into the case. Couldn't have done it better myself. Of course, much more interesting is that just before this, Columbo chats with a dead ringer for George C. Scott, the real-life husband of the episode's murderer. Now 
want you to remember that's a line monitor that no bastard ever that's what's going on the air won a war preview monitor by dying for his country but that's a subject for another time <laughs>